Australian freshwater crocodile. Oh man, and he's strong, he's pushing against my leg. But this is not the guy that I've come to catch here in Australia. The guy I'm looking for is maybe just as big, even bigger, and even more powerful. But he patrols deep in the outback desert. Off you go, boy, off you go. Ever since I can remember, I've been interested in dangerous and exotic wildlife. But for the past 10 years or so, I've earned my living from photography. Traveling from my home in Southern Africa to the ends of the earth to photograph some of the rarest and deadliest creatures in the world. This is the Parenti, a giant monitor lizard and a close relative of the famous Komodo dragon. At over seven feet in length, it's one of the largest and most formidable lizards in the world. My mission is to find and photograph one of these giants in the wild. Parentes occur only in Australia's arid desert interior, the outback. But there's just one stop I have to make on the way. This prehistoric landscape is the perfect place to look for frilled lizards. Although much smaller than a parenti, they are still capable of showing some of the attitude I'll be up against when I face the real thing. You just get a, one picture of this frill, isn't this incredible? This is the Australian frilled lizard, famous lizard. Look at him. What he's doing is defending himself, frilling up, making himself look as big and dangerous as possible. Oh, and swiping with his tail. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Got rows of teeth in that mouth too. You don't want to get near that mouth. Got yellow interior. Hisses and blows at you. Gives you a warning. Says, get away. Otherwise, I'm going to let you have it. Wow, with the tail again. In many ways, this is very similar to the giant Parentes lizard that I'm looking for in the outback Australia. It's much, much bigger than this, but it also has a threatening appearance. It hasn't a frill like this, but doesn't need a frill because it's got a massive body, big nails, big thick neck, big mouth. It's a lizard I'm gonna have to be wary of. It's probably about two to two and a half meters long compared to this guy. Yeah, this guy relies on shock tactic to actually defend himself. Isn't that fantastic? These guys are mostly insectivorous. They haven't got such powerful jaws, although if you look inside, you can see the teeth, and he's got this tongue that he's pushing forward all the time. He can give you a nip, but if a parentis were to get hold of you, would probably take your finger off, no question about it. Completely different thing. This is marvelous. I didn't expect him to stay, because if these guys get to a tree, they run up a tree. But this guy now has decided that he's got, he can't get away. There's no trees within range. I'm in this fantastic area with all these termite mounds. Magnetic termite mounds, and he just couldn't get past you. If he gets to a big tree and he goes up, then I've lost him for sure. So this is my perfect opportunity. Look at, look at this. Look at that. What a pose. In your face. There we go. Whoa! There he goes. Oh. And, and he's threatening me. Look at this. He says, I'm coming to get you, boy. I'm coming to get you. Oh, he said there wasn't a tree, so I'll just take hold of this guy. Even the antip will be okay. Relax. Oopsie. Oopsie, come, come up, there we go. Just mustn't let him get those claws into me or, or the mouth. There we are, he's not too bad tempered. There we go, taking a liking to the camera. Look at that, oh, he wants to take a bite. He nearly took a bite of the camera, isn't that fantastic? Oh, that's amazing, that's amazing. I mean, I know, I've read about these guys, you know, and I know you have to run like mad to catch them, and they usually get away. But to stand and face you and show the frill, that's really fantastic. They actually have cartilage inside the frill, rows of cartilage which actually cause it to flare out like that. But normally when he's not doing that, when he's not in danger, then it's completely flat and he looks just like any other lizard. But they run really fast and they stand up on their back legs, they actually go bipedal. They can run at a terrific speed. Now the Parentes lizards that I'm looking for probably don't have the agility of this guy. But if I did tackle one of them, I think I'm going to have a wrestling match on my hand. Alright, now look at me. I'm going to put him right down where I had him. 
put him right back here and see if I leave him alone and he can go off on his own time. That little guy was fantastic. I just hope I won't be the one needing to make a run for it when I finally meet up with a giant parenti. I'm driving into the Australian outback on a quest to find and photograph the parenti, one of the world's largest lizards. A couple of years ago, I actually toured Australia photographing reptiles. At that time, I was concentrating mostly on snakes. While I was here, I was astounded by the amount of lizard species, how different they are, how exotic, beautiful stuff, different completely to anything else I've seen in the world. But I told myself at that time, I promised I'm coming back, and here I am at last. And this time, I'm on a mission. The main lizard that I became interested in last time was the giant Parentes monitor lizard. And they prowl out here in the central Australian deserts. And I've decided to put all my priority into finding this lizard, getting close to photographing it. But it's not going to be easy. So little is known about the mysterious Parenti. There are very few in captivity, almost none outside of Australia. And there is no record of how many there are in the wild. What is certain is that they are extremely elusive and I've got miles of outback desert to search. I've driven almost a thousand miles. The small town of Alice Springs was the last chance to stock up with supplies. From here on, I'm on my own. Well, actually, it's looking quite good around here now. A lot of grass, a lot of thick bush, and I've been seeing a lot of tracks going off here. Look like really wild tracks as well, so I'm gonna pick the next one and go off. It goes far away from the highway, then get into there, make a camp and start working around, around the camp area. If, if that's not good, I go further, make another camp, work around there. So I leave the relative safety of the black tar and take the red dirt. It looks like the last person to come this way didn't get out in one piece. About three hours off the highway and into the Outback's red center, I decide it's time to make a base. The fold-out tent on the roof makes it quick and easy to set up camp. It also keeps me well away from snakes. For once, I'm not interested in them. My mission is to photograph a giant parenti. But with so much ground to cover, I'm beginning to think I've got my work cut out. Well, this is about as far as I'm taking the cruiser now. The country's getting really rough. A lot of bush, very difficult to get through. But that's why I brought the bike. Take the bike now, I can cruise anywhere. I can get between trees, over rocks, everywhere I want to go. It's not a problem. Bike's the answer. Taking enough stuff with me too. Just in case, just in case I decide to stay overnight or something like that. And then I've got enough stuff. I've got my camera in the bag. I've got all this. I've got my snake stick. As long as I've got my snake stick, I'm happy. There are more venomous snake species in the outback than non-venomous. I'm impatient to see a real parenti in the flesh. But it soon becomes apparent that finding one isn't going to be easy. As I head deeper into the outback, all I'm discovering is why this desert is known as the Red Center. I ride all day to an area of open dunes. Here I might just have a chance of tracking a parenti down but it means staying the night. Oh, my sand everywhere. Well, I've been traveling all day since early this morning and I'm really far from my base camp. But what's happened here is I've come into this red dune area. I didn't even know about this. And I came over here and the first thing I saw when I was down the bottom, there was a lizard track. And I realized better I spend the night here. The sun's setting now, there's no point in going back. Spend the night here and watch for lizard tracks. Because in the morning when everybody's been foraging after dawn, I got a good chance to follow them. And if I look around and I'm lucky, who knows, I might even find a parenti hole or something over here. That night, my dreams are dominated by thoughts of what I might find in the morning. With a powerful tail lash, strong claws and a vice-like jaw, 
They have a fearsome reputation, and I'm going to try and tackle one. The next morning, I get up early, with the sun just rising, to begin my search for parenti tracks. At this time of day, the tracks show up clearly, and everywhere I look, there's evidence that this inhospitable place is far from deserted. Just look at this. This is just what I was talking about. Everywhere you go in the morning, tracks. Look at these tracks here. It almost looks like two sets here. I can't even identify all of them. Here goes another one over here. But these along here, looks like maybe like a little kangaroo rat or something is bounded along here. I find beetle tracks, I find lizard tracks, everything you can think of. Nothing big yet. If a parentis went through here, you'd see a really big swipe. So I'm still looking for that. But it's like reading a newspaper in the morning. You come and search the dunes where they're smooth and windblown. You can read exactly what's been going on in the night. Fantastic. In fact, there are so many tracks, it's starting to drive me crazy. It seems like every outback creature except a parenti has passed this way. All the tracks I'm finding are from smaller animals. Even so, my curiosity gets the better of me and I decide to follow some. Ah, look at this! Look at this! <laughs> I've been following this trail all the way down this dune and look what I got. Of all the reptiles in the world, that must be one of the most bizarre looking. That's a Moloch, better known as Thorny Devil. You can see exactly why. Look at this. Look at all those thorns on that body. And if you look at his face, look really close. See those horns up there? That's exactly how people expect a little devil to look. Okay? Of course, this guy is actually completely harmless. And what they do is they eat ants. And only one specific type of ant that they prefer, a black ant that you find in the outback deserts here. And if they find an ant nest or they find a trail of ants, they plonk themselves down right in the middle and they just start lapping them up. They can eat as much as 2,000 ants in about an hour. That's a lot of eating. Not too much is known about these guys, but one thing's for sure. Normally you would expect a pattern like this to be completely bizarre and out of, out of proportion. But in this desert environment with all this red sand, different colors of grass and such like, if he's tucked away into a grassy bush, you'll never see him. You probably walk right over him and not realize he's there. Another thing to take note of is these thorns, all these little prickly things, these protrusions he's got all over the body, it's got to be a self-defense mechanism. It can't be anything else. So I imagine if a dingo or a sand python or something actually grabbed onto this guy and took a bite, and as soon as I put my hand over there, you can feel how he puffs himself up. He immediately pushes those thorny projections out like that. And if that pierces the tongue of an animal or into the palate, you can imagine that animal probably let go straight away. And that gives the thorny just a few minutes he needs to actually get away. There's another theory. This little false head, you see that? That's like a fatty protrusion over here, which some people are calling a false head. And there may be some fact to that, because when you approach a thorny the first time, they often put their heads down to defend themselves. And they offer this little fatty protrusion here forward, like that. So that a predator might just bite onto that and grab that instead of the head. Again, giving the lizard a chance to get away before he actually gets badly damaged. One of the most interesting facts about these guys these guys can actually collect water from mist or from rain. And that might explain why the body is so fluted. Okay? How the lines move down the body over here. If it was a smooth skinned body, it probably, the water would probably just flow away. This water is actually channeled towards the mouth. It actually channels down, goes towards there, and by capillary action at the edge of the mouth, they can actually absorb that water. It's a special desert technique for getting water when there is very little water. Now the eyes are very small, which is very typical of a desert creature which lives in sandy areas. The smaller his eyes, the better protection he's got against sand getting into those eyes. But in actual fact, the eyesight is very good, amazingly good. I've actually seen this with my own eyes. Moloch walking along the top of a sand dune, sees a bird up in the, in the sky, actually turns his head, looks right at the bird, and then ducks for cover. So they obviously can see pretty well. I wonder if it's a female. This could just be a female. I'm looking how fat her tummy is. She's either eaten a million ants in the last hour or so, or she's got a couple of eggs in here. That's probably what she's doing over here. She's looking for a good spot where she can tunnel down. They tunnel down quite deep, lay about half a dozen eggs, close it up and disappear again. It would take a couple of months for those to hatch as well. Okay, what I'd like to do is take a few pictures of this girl. I'll see if I can place her on the sand. I've never seen a thorny devil that's active. Look at her, she's really keen to go. I'll get a picture. See if I can do a bit of this. Don't disappear on me. Look how fast she can move. You wouldn't expect an animal like this that's so stockily built 
to be able to move so quickly. Come straight towards me. Come on, there we go. One super picture, that's my girl. You might expect to see something like this on the surface of, of Mars rather than you do here on Earth. There can't be another animal in the world that's built quite like this. Unbelievable, is it? I'm so pleased I found that. That's really something special. I'm just going to put her down. Maybe she'll walk back up there on her own and I can keep an eye on her for a little while. You want to go to the shade? There we go. Off you go, girl. It's important not to keep her out in the sun too long. The day is warming up and this thorny devil needs to find some shade. But for a big animal like the Parenti, small shrubs aren't going to offer much protection. They prefer burrows to escape the blistering desert heat. They also use them for hibernating during the winter months when the desert is at its coldest. All in all, they spend a lot of their time underground and I'm beginning to think that that's the best place to look for one. This is the first time I've got definite sign of parentes. I mean, there's just no other lizard that makes a hole this size. I'm trying to get the light in so that I can just see as far down as I can. Imagine the size of a lizard that can dig a hole like this. But you just can't see past the bend because all these lizards make a bend, they make a curve like that. So you just can't see beyond the curve. So you can't tell if he's actually there or not. You've got to sort of reflect the light in. But there's dust now. Let's just see if I put my... It's difficult to tell. There's definitely chest marks here. He's been in or out. And it's so soft here, I just know it's in use. The thing is, they can dig in about two or three meters sometimes. I tell you what, there's only one thing I can try. I get beyond that bend. One part of me that's a little bit longer. And it's not, not a very clever idea actually, but you know what they do, they, they jam themselves out and they stuck there. If I feel, feel its body, I just hope that his mouth is not there. I can feel right on the end because if he's got himself stuck in and you stick your foot in, it feels like you're rubbing against a rock. But I think it's even deeper than actually. I can't tell for sure. I'd have, to, I'd have to crawl right in there if I'm actually going to find something. Wow. Let's just see. Poor. Man, I can almost get in here. Ah. Oh, no. Wouldn't be wise. If he turned around and grabbed hold of me, I'd know all about it, that's for sure. The parentes grab onto you, they don't let go. Like all monitor lizards. They grab, they hold on. So, uh, best thing I can do here is stake this place out and keep an eye. Maybe he comes in and out. I'm convinced that I found my Parenti's hideout. I'll wait as long as it takes to get a photograph. I've found the lair of Australia's giant Parenti lizard. Now it's time to get a photograph. With no time to lose, I fetch my vehicle and set up camp. Parenti's can spend long periods of time underground, so I'm preparing for a lengthy stakeout. set up my bush camp just over the horizon over there but I've got to spend a lot of time down here I've got these holes lined up right here so I've got to be close to these parentes all the time if I've got a chance of seeing them this is where I have to be this tree is actually perfectly positioned it's got a lot of shade a lot of shadow here and it's got a place where I can actually sit so I'll come down here as often as I can and watch these holes as often as I can make sure that I don't miss them if they do come in or out I know my stakeout could last a while but if it lands me a parenti then it will be worth the wait But a whole week passes with no sign of the giant lizard. My surveillance operation is not going according to plan. I thought I had spotted two sets of fresh tracks at the burrow entrance, suggesting one small parenti and another much larger one.
Parentes are usually solitary creatures, but there could be two in there. However, sharing a burrow would be risky. Under pressure, a parenti might turn cannibalistic, so it's possible that the larger animal could be planning on making a meal out of its smaller and weaker roommate. After such a big meal, who knows when the victim might come out again. It's frustrating, but if I'm going to stand any chance of finding a parenti, I need to change tactics and widen the search by exploring deeper into the outback. Making ever widening circles around my camp, I scan the desert floor for other burrows or any sign of tracks. But it's only when I raise my eyes from the ground that I finally spot something. A sand monitor. It's a close relative of the parenti. I want to get a closer look. Uh, there he goes. I was hoping to sneak right up on him, but he's climbing. Uh, I got him. I got him. Oh, he's strong. Come on, let's go, let's go. I got, I got him. Yeah. Oh, I got him. Look at that. <laughs> ah. Isn't he a beaut? That's a sand monitor. There's lots of them all over the place here. And I saw him right down there and he took a break for it. Usually they've got holes and they go down the hole, but if he can't get to the hole, like a shot up in the tree. And I thought maybe if I'm lucky and I get up there, he hasn't got further to go, I can get him. Look at this, guys. Much like what I'm looking for, like a parentes, but of course much smaller. Parentes maybe, I don't know, five, six times bigger than this. But look at these claws already. I imagine a parentes with claws six times that big. I'm gonna have to watch out. And all these guys, even these little ones, they got big teeth, he can't get your fingers near there if he opens his mouth, rows of teeth. I think he's mad, look at him, he's puffed up, he's, he's a male, oh he's a male, and he's really mad, he's puffed himself up, look at his body, it's like a balloon, he's angry, he's saying, let me go, let me go, I want to get at you. I'm just going to put him back in the tree, leave him up there, and see what he does. You're going to go back, boy? Parentes, if they're hunting, and they come across a lizard like this, they'll actually eat these guys. Parentes will hunt them down and eat them. If I let go, yeah, he's gonna shoot away. You ready to go, my boy? All right, watch, as soon as I let go, he's gonna rock it out of this tree like a shot. You ready? Here we go. Wow, where's he gone? And there he goes. <laughs> and he's gone. Did you see that? Did you see him move? He's like greased lightning, man. If I didn't get him in the tree, I would never have got him. Now, Parentes moves like that as well, so I gotta watch out or I gotta be fit or something. Parentes are phenomenal runners, sprinting on all fours at up to 12 miles an hour. If I encounter one in the open, I'll have a hard job keeping up with it. The Parenti may be one of the fastest runners in the lizard world, but that's not the only way it hunts. It's also quite capable of using stealth. Using slow, steady movements, this giant lizard can virtually disappear into its surroundings. Yet another reason why these lizards are so very hard to find. I've had no luck searching for parentes on the desert floor, so I decide to climb to higher ground and survey the area. I just need to know what my options are. And that's when it hits me. Looking out at mile after mile of arid desert, I realize that I've been lucky to find any trace of a parenti at all. I could move on, but my instincts tell me to stay camped where I am. In this wilderness, 
The Parentis burrow remains the only shred of hope I have. But on the way back to camp, the outback proves yet again that it has plenty of surprises in store. Ah, you won't believe what I found here. Yeah. I've got him. I've got him. <laughs> oh, he's resisting a little bit. Are oh, you puffing at me? Oh, look at this guy. Wow. Oh, look at that. Isn't he gorgeous? Come on. This is an Australian black-headed python. Oh, you can see why it's called that. They're one of the most gentle pythons. There's nothing to worry about usually. I don't think if I even put my hand close, he's not worried about trying to bite. Oh, but I look at this, look at the eyes. He's actually gonna shed his skin. When a snake's gonna shed his skin, always gets a layer of fluid in between the old skin and the new. And of course, he's got skin covering his eyes as well. So there's fluid in there as well. As Soon as that fluid clears up, then the skin's ready to come off. And this guy's starting to look clear. Soon he's gonna be shedding his skin, which might be the reason for him parked over there, settling in there, getting ready for that skin to be shed. There is another reason that I'm looking at this, because this is a fig tree. This is something that, that I've read about before, that I've never actually seen. These snakes might settle themselves down under this fig tree, because they know. The berries are coming on the fig trees, you can actually see berries there now. They drop off onto the ground, they attract insects, they attract birds, they attract mice, all kinds of little creatures. And all this python has to do is actually sit there and help himself as these animals come past. He can feed on them. So it's a really good place for him to park out. You know, pythons have got spurs. Those are vestigial limbs, you know. Pythons are primitive snakes and they have rudimentary pelvis arrangement of bones inside here still. So those little spurs are just the spurs covering the edges of what used to be legs at one time, in other words. Very small in this case. I'm gonna stick him back there. Let me just unwind him a bit. Oh. I mean, I've only read about these guys and I know the pet trade. They're big demand in the pet trade, and of course they're protected by law all over the world. You're not allowed to have these guys. So it's very well that I leave him here, tuck him away, get him going back in there. Such a gorgeous boy. Okay, that's great. That's really fantastic. I'm so pleased about that. My first blackhead python. Coming across that python is just the proof I need that it's possible to find all sorts of reptiles here. And it's given me an idea. The python was drawn to an area where there's food. So what would happen if I tried the same tactic with a lizard? If I can't get to a parenti, perhaps I can get a parenti to come to me. Parentes will readily kill when necessary, but they are also willing scavengers, and they are particularly partial to kangaroo meat. If I can just get hold of some, I reckon I might stand a chance of tempting a parenti out of its burrow. I'd never be prepared to kill an animal for bait, but I won't have to, because I know just where to look for a dead kangaroo. Kangaroos are one of the few animals that don't stay away from the highways. Consequently, they have a lot of run-ins with motor vehicles, Literally. Every year, thousands of kangaroos are killed by cars in this area. But a sad end for the kangaroo will hopefully provide a parenti with a meal, and me with a first-class photo of this elusive lizard. With the dead drew on the hood of my vehicle, I set off back to camp. This might be an unusual tactic, but it may also be the only way I'm going to see a giant parenti in the wild. I take the carcass back to the burrow. I position the dead kangaroo upwind of the hole, retreat to my hide, and
and my plan to lure the Parenti out of his hole still isn't working. I can't understand it. In the searing desert heat, the roux carcass is really beginning to stink, a smell that should be irresistible to a Parenti. If there's no action tomorrow, I'm going to have to come up with another plan. But I'm fast running out of ideas. This is turning out to be one of the most demoralizing photographic missions I've ever been on. The next morning brings a nasty surprise. I can't believe this. I mean, I've been staking out this place for about three days now. I found this roux, I brought it, but I put it right up on the bank. I thought if I keep the guys close by, I don't make it too obvious. I'm near the hole. I want to see these guys going in and out. And I find this today, it's been pulled right down, pulled into this, into the sand bank. I can't believe it. You know how big an animal's got to be to do this? First, I thought maybe there'd been dingoes or something around, but there's no tracks. I find just parentis tracks everywhere in the sand over here. And if you see over here on the bone, this is typical of these lizards. They eat where their jaws can fit over. Look at the bone, it's been completely bared and they've taken the tail, which is the easiest part for them to break off. I don't know if there's one or two animals, I'm guessing this is a pair, but I'm not sure. All I can see is that pieces have been eaten off everywhere, definitely, and it's a lot for one, for one lizard, unless this thing is ginormous. Experience has taught me that if you want to encounter animals in the wild, you have to be patient. But I've never known a situation as frustrating as this. I just can't take another day of watching and waiting. If my parenti has left its hole, I'm determined that it is not going to get out of range. Although the noise of my bike might alert my quarry, at least I'll have a chance of catching up with it. With every hole or burrow I come across, I need to search the surrounding area within at least a two mile radius. Because a parenti can easily do a three mile round trip in a single day. These holes are abandoned. The sandy walls are dry and crumbling, showing the burrows have not been in use for some considerable time. Once again, I'm struck by the enormity of my task. I am, quite literally, going around in circles. But my search for the Parenti has become an obsession. Somewhere out there, that giant lizard is waiting for me. After a month of searching for the giant Parenti lizard in the vast wilderness of the Australian outback, it's now a question of what's going to run out first, my patience or my supplies. Either one could be dangerous. I've scoured every inch of ground for miles around, but found little evidence of the elusive Parenti. And although I've tried every method I can think of to track one down, what I really need is a stroke of luck. On the morning of day 37, I get it. Look at this tough guy, he's barely broken step, and I'm having to sprint to catch up. He's not even afraid, he's standing his ground and lashing at me with his tail. Ah, ah I've got him! Ah, oh, he's got my foot! Ah, God, he's got a powerful jaw on him, this is the most powerful lizard in this... Ah, he let go, thank goodness, look how he's ripped my boot, that's incredible! At last, after all this time! Staking this guy out, watching him eat that carrion. And it's one of the reasons you mustn't get your hand in there. There's a lot of bacteria in those teeth. And if he bites you, a lot of blood poisoning. It's incredibly dangerous. Have a look on my leg here. The size of those claws actually hanging on to me. So I'm keeping him off balance. 
and just keeping his body off balance. That's the only trick you can use. Keep him off balance so that he can't get it. If he turns around, faces me, and he let rip, and you weren't holding on to him, and he could be free to move. You're going to rake those claws across you and really be bad. Get all those claws in. Look at the size of that claw there, that center one. There we go. He's a real old boy as well. It looks like a piece of his tail is missing as well. I think he's been in a lot of wars. Well, you see now this tail, obviously long ago broken off. That's well healed. But it probably was another foot longer on there. They use their tail to defend themselves and they sometimes beat with that tail. He might do that to me when I try and take pictures of him. So what I need to do is get my camera because I've lost my bearings completely. Somewhere near my motorbike is where my camera is lying and I want to take photos of this guy. And then maybe I can demonstrate exactly how powerful he is and what he'll do with his tail. Okay, I've got him. If I've got him like that, I got my shopping handbag. While I've got hold of him, I've got control. It's what happens when I put him down that worries me. Will he allow me to take a photograph? I've picked up my camera. I'm looking for a good place, which I see just over there, clear spot where I can try and get the pictures I need. But he's really getting agitated now. And I've got to put him down really carefully, otherwise he's going to take off like a shot and I'm going to lose him again. This would be as good a place as any. And I've got him slightly raised here, which makes it good for photography. But these guys are so tremendously powerful, you don't know what to expect next. You see, the trouble is, once I've let go of this head, I've got no chance of grabbing it again. Because he's going to let me have it. These necks are so long. These guys are like the old prehistoric raptors, like the dinosaurs. Okay, we're going to do this now. I'm going to let him go, and I'm going to try and slowly move back and let him keep a concentration on me. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's the pictures I'm looking for. Ah. All right. Watch that tail. Let's see the tail. Oh. There we go. Okay, so he's warning. This is fine. This is fine. This is the only lizard I know that will actually turn and lunge at you. He has no fear of humans at all. He's absolutely fearless. There we go. Keep it up. What a lizard. And he's thinking, can he go or can he face me? Ah. Ow. Right across my lens. That's that for me. He wants to walk away now. And usually what they do is they start moving away slowly like that. But he's just holding it. He's not sure now. Now you see this guy's actually shedding his skin a little bit. They shed their skin in little bits and pieces. So you can see he's got two tones here. Dark patches and the light patches. The new skin all over there and the dark patches over here. This skin has still got to come off. Ah. Okay. Look at that jaw. You can bring that jaw right around. Look at that. Man, I can see right on his throat. Ah. Okay. He's actually standing for me. This is fantastic. Ah. Okay. Got to be careful with that because when you're so close to tell you, he can turn and as easily grab you there. Another interesting thing about these guys, they're snake eaters. Like I said, they'll eat anything. But very interesting is that they'll take brown snakes and stuff that they get around here. And those snakes can actually bite them and give them a lethal dose. And actually this lizard is highly immune. Highly resistant, at least, to the bites of those snakes. So you can swallow down a highly venomous snake with little problem at all. Okay, I can do one or two more shots before I let him go. Because he's getting a bit agitated. But he's, he's hissing beautifully. Yeah, that hiss takes in the lungs and forcibly exhales. Let's it all out. Is that fantastic? shots unbelievable lizard I mean I'm so lucky this guy I mean he's just the right size I could just handle this they get bigger they could get maybe even a meter bigger but then I really have my hands full so I'm quite happy and he's being really well behaved now I'm getting just the shots on I mean after all these weeks of hunting this guy and finally catching him I'm so impressed I get a real good close-up of that head fantastic okay so I'm basically got everything I came for and I'm quite happy to leave him and he go on his way because he lives right here so I've got nothing to worry about. He can be on his way. Thank you for that. I'm on my way. It's been an incredible experience being with you. I'm off. Success. I came to Australia with a mission. 
and I've achieved so much more than I ever thought possible. I've encountered some fascinating lizards, from the dramatic frilled lizard in the north to the bizarre thorny devil right in the heart of the outback. It has been an adventure that I'll never forget. And nothing can top the experience of finally coming face to face with the giant Parenti, one of the largest and toughest lizards in the world. I head back to the highway a very happy man.